it doesn't explain why it was this very special state. So the proposal that I put forward, what I call conformal cyclic cosmology, or CCC, is that what was before was, well, now here's the second trick. You see, there are two tricks. These are mathematical tricks, but I'm, tr I'm trying to say they're really part of physics. The mathematical trick number one I just described, that is to say the Big Bang, to describe what it was like, you can stretch it out and it becomes a smooth boundary. Now the other trick is you go all the way out to infinity. Now that I'm talking about the future infinity, way, way in the distant future, when every, all the or life is exhausted and black holes, they finally evaporate away and disappear in about a Google years. That's 10 to the 100 years you need for the biggest black holes to go. Maybe longer. Depends how big they get. And after that, that's what I call the very boring universe. There's absolutely nothing of any interest going on. Now, you see, that was the sort of thing that set me off thinking, you know, it's a bit of a shame to have this. That's what we're in for. You see, it's a very boring, uni boring universe. But then I thought, well, there's this other trick we've played around with for a long time, and that is to squash down infinity. Now, most of the stuff that will be around in this very late stage will be photons. And photons don't have any mass. They don't care. Big from small is completely equivalent. So that it, they, they don't know that the universe is that big. Right. So as far as the photons are concerned, again, you can apply this kind of trick. And future infinity is another nice smooth boundary. This actually comes about because of one of the recent fundamental observations in cosmology, which is that the accelerating expansion had been observed, which people refer to as being caused by some mysterious dark energy. I prefer to say it's simply Einstein's lambda term. In 1917, I think it was, Einstein suggested a modification to his original equations, which he suggested for not actually a good reason, but never mind. It was a very good suggestion because it's the only thing you can do to his equations without ruining them. And he knew that. So he said, well, maybe there is this other term, this thing called lambda, the cosmological constant, which maybe is there. Now, if you have that term, his equations, and if this lambda thing is positive, then the future has this nice smooth character, which I knew from long ago, mm -hmm. and that seems to fit against this Big Bang. So here's the crazy idea, and I used to say, you know, this is a crazy idea, more or less um, trying to prevent other people from saying it first. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea was that it's not so crazy, because the squashed down infinity is very like the stretched out Big Bang, extremely like it. And the idea is, okay, maybe that, but not our infinity, it has to be somebody else's. So there was what I call eon. Our eon is the Big Bang to infinity. And there was another eon before us, according to this scheme. And its infinity, squashed down, is just our Big Bang stretched out. And they just fit. And this keeps on going one after the other. 